Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to do a review on these Amcrest cameras that I promised you. Uh, but you know right out of the box that it's got to be good because anytime I buy two of anything, it means I like them. And I'm going to explain to you why I like these cameras so much. And then I'll even show you what the, uh, the picture looks like on my surveillance system. So let's go over the specs on these cameras real quick and sorry I haven't memorized them but I'll read them off to you on the front of the box. It is a 1080p high resolution. Uh, I believe it is a 2 megapixel camera. Uh, good enough for surveillance use. I'm not looking to zoom in on license plates or anything like that. Uh, the big thing for me is it has 128 degree uh, width of field. So most uh, surveillance cameras, if you use them, they, they have a narrow ang a view angle. They don't catch much, but this one is quite wide, as you'll see when I show you on the demonstration. Night vision on it, pretty good. No complaints. Motion detection, they all have motion detection. Uh, mo it has a mobile app. Uh, it has a storage option on board. You can actually use an SD card and just record right to the camera if you don't have uh, surveillance software. Uh, they're weatherproof, made for outdoors, and uh, quick and easy setup, and I will attest to that. These were the easiest cameras by far I've had to set up yet on my surveillance system, other than the D-Link camera, which is in my kitchen. Um, the uh, We have the Real Link camera outside, uh, currently on the driveway, and it is a narrow width camera. It doesn't get a very wide angle, so one of these cameras is going to be going out to my driveway because I want a better field of view, a wider field of view, I should say. Uh, this camera came uh, to me, I think we paid 69 bucks for it on Amazon. So it's a relatively inexpensive camera. It does not have pan, tilt, or zoom, but it does have a nice little feature here where it has a uh, sun guard over the top of it. The uh, base what I really like this is that it has three, what is it, three different directions of movement on the base. So you can really articulate, move this camera around where you need to, whether you plant the base vertically or on a side wall, it'll work both ways. And I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, as we go outside to take a look at how we mounted the camera and how we have one mounted in here, give you a better idea of that. Uh, it was very easy to set up. I ha also, I have not observed this camera phoning home to China, so that's another good thing. Uh, they do make an Amcrest uh, software that you can load on your PC. You load it up, it goes out and finds the ID of the camera. It's very trivial to set up an IP address on this, username, password. And then once you've done that basic setup with the Amcrest setup software, then you can go in using uh, Internet Explorer or Mozilla because Chrome for some reason doesn't like the software on these cameras because uh, it has an ActiveX component that you need to use Internet Explorer with. So, But once you do that, you can go in and you can set up any multitude of features. Now, I had several people ask me, hey, can you turn off... Amcrest also has the ability to turn on and turn off their display on the camera. For example, I'm using Blue Iris, so it gives the camera a name, it puts the time and the date stamp on it. So there is a way to go in through the Amcrest software and turn all that information off, including the little Amcrest watermark. So I know some of you were worried about that. The model of this camera is the IP2M-825EW. I'll put it down in the description below so you can uh, go look it up. I'll also put a link to the camera on Amazon, which is where I got these from. And the biggie with these cameras, too, is they're also PoE. Uh, so if you have a power over Ethernet connection, uh, you don't need to run a separate power adapter. As you know, Sasha Lopez was kind enough to donate that uh, Ubiquiti or Unify uh, Tough Switch, which is PoE, and that's what we've dedicated to our cameras. So that made life very simple. I've already had some cables ran out to the location. It was just a matter of plugging it in and configuring it. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to go over is the night vision. It has uh, 18 infrared LEDs with a maximum range of 82 feet. Okay, yeah, but you know, here's the deal about night vision. I don't care. Uh, now, all I've used is a 2 megapixel camera. Uh, the the uh, there's a higher type of cameras. There's a ten, there's a 1K and a 2K camera or 2K camera and a 4K camera. They're a little out of my price range. Their night vision may be better. I don't care what camera it is in this kind of price range. 
uh, you're not going to be able to see as much detail in the infrared at night as you can during the day uh, with you know regular light so don't plan on infrared to save your bacon uh, where the camera is placed and I'll show you I can actually see into my neighbor's yard and, and see movement as well which is what my neighbor has asked me to do they have cameras as well but they have had some thefts recently so they asked me to place my camera so I could also see into their yard so we could catch any perpetrators uh, so basically we can watch people steal our shit it's great uh, so there you go there's the specs on the cameras now let's go take a look at uh, what I'm talking about and how I have them mounted so we temporarily have the camera mounted on the door to the equipment room uh, you can mount it on the side uh, like a, that's representing a like if you mount it on the side of your wall outside or you could mount it on the sill above either way uh, it, and with the articulating mount on the camera around the back here I'll show you that you have three different uh, articulation points where you can move your set screws so you can uh, turn the camera this way you can tilt it up and down and you can move it in and out so this base like I said can either be mounted vertically or you can mount it up on the horizontal and it'll work these screws allow you to to move the camera in any direction you need to and then on the top you have the sun shield right here uh, that's if you you know if you point it in a west or a east direction you can move the shade to keep the sun from uh, hitting the lens of the camera and washing out the image and then uh, on the connection point if you don't have PoE it does have a power connector it does not include a power adapter but you can get one on on uh, eBay or Amazon wherever but since I'm using PoE it comes down here to this connection and then we take it down to the graciously donated switch from Sasha Lopez in the UK and that's where it gets its PoE connection so real quick I'll just show you a shot of the real link camera if you come around here to the back of the camera you can see how it mounts uh, I don't know that it has as many yeah it has as many articulation points as the uh, as the Amcrest camera uh, but this is the one we currently have uh, looking onto the driveway uh, and this is the one that I occasionally every time after it rains it'll the camera will just go out all right and so here we are at the Amcrest camera at the back of the house and you can see we've got it about uh, almost to the halfway point of the house and so if my cameraman will pan out here to give you an idea of how big the backyard is and how big the neighbor's yard is and then uh, you've already seen uh, on the footage inside where I showed you what the camera is viewing and then again just like the camera inside we have uh, we have a network cable run to it it's a PoE we haven't secured it yet because we're just testing it it does have the ability to plug in the power there if you don't have PoE and you see how we were able to mount the camera right on the side of the house under the eaves so it's somewhat protected from the weather and you can see the depth of the width of the field it gets out here in, in on my property what we're going to do is we're going to mount another camera right behind this one and that is going to get the view looking this way into the neighbor's yard and to my backyard so we'll have a we should have full coverage of the backyard with the exception of this dead spot right here in the middle of the backyard so it'll be uh, hopefully the best of both worlds now what I really like about these cameras is the fact that it comes with a relatively simple program to set up the cameras so you basically plug the cameras in give them power so either use your power over Ethernet or an ethernet cable with a, a power adapter which is not included with these cameras and basically you plug it in and then you use this little IP config utility it goes out very similar to how Synology sets up their NAS systems they just have a utility that goes out and looks at the serial number of the camera and then uh, that's how you are able to get into it so initially you get into it with this interface so let's uh, go to the camera that's outside so uh, the first thing you want to do is click on login and I've already given my cameras a new username and password so I just want to make sure I put that in here and there we go uh, so this is the new camera in my office and as you can see I'm doing it live so it has pretty good response just let you look at all the controls here channel color modes uh, standard soft and bright right now it's in day night mode because of the lighting in this office uh, but you can adjust brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, 
uh, your BLC mode you can turn on or off and your day night mode I just leave it set at auto and then right here is where you would set your IP address if you didn't want to use DHCP now when these come from the factory configuration they are configured to use DHCP so you'll need to turn that little checkbox off and enter your own IP address in there save it and then the camera will uh, reboot and uh, save those settings and then you can go here under the encode and you have some options here I'm not going to go over those not too uh, not too interested in those but you can set your resolution your frame rate your bit rate uh, you can enable uh, substreams and you can even change the uh, encode mode if you need to so that's a handy feature they're very easy to upgrade you just download the uh, current firmware uh, open it and then send it to the camera and upgrade it uh, and then over here is the info tab it'll tell you your serial number your version of software you're running the build date the type of camera and then you can uh, uh, change your time and date or sync it uh, with a an NTP server now one thing that you can't do is here are some of the advanced features so this utility is basically for you to get it set up on your network and then you can uh, further configure this if I close this you have an option here to click on web login uh, which will bring up the web interface of the camera so let's do that next so you'll get uh, I'm using Internet Explorer to open this so it's gonna ask your permission to run this program I'm gonna go ahead and allow it and I'm gonna wait here a second to see if it asks again sometimes it'll do it two I think two times is a charm so I'll go ahead and log into the camera here using Internet Explorer and there you go there's a there's a view of the ca uh, camera uh, so down here you have some controls you can adjust or image adjustment uh, a ratio a resize full screen uh, your white balance or your width and height I think that is and then a fluency whatever that is the one we're interested in is up here on the setup uh, so you can tell it give it a profile you can change your picture your exposure BLC I have no idea what that is white balance I just leave all those set at auto including uh, the profile for night vision and etc so that's those uh, those settings right there and then you have a uh, see video configuration uh, so this is similar to the setup program that was running you can uh, futz with your uh, your settings and then uh, you can take a snapshot if you need to and here's the big one that everybody asks about is the overlays okay so initially uh, right now let's see privacy manager I don't know what that is but if you come to channel title right now I've disabled the channel title and you see where it would position it I've disabled the time I want to let uh, blue iris determine the time on the camera and then the logo overlay so if you enable it you see we have the Amcrest logo appears so people have asked how to get rid of that you do that through the web browser just disable it and then save it and then that logo will disappear and then basically the same thing your, your network connection your TCP IP connection information dynamic DNS IP filter I'm not going to go through all these again this is just kind of a real quick review uh, you do have uh, a way to uh, do storage on here and set your destination I don't have a uh, SSD card in there but I believe you can put one in and, and record to SSD and then your system general information users default settings import and exports upgrades and then uh, information so that's it basically uh, as simple as I can make it in a nutshell all right so here's my blue iris view so I've got six total cameras on there now you just saw UFO fly across so uh, the beauty of blue iris I'm again I'm not going to go into blue iris the configuration or anything I'm just going to show you how this is all working and pardon me this camera is not tilted properly but if I were to click on the the camera you can see that's a shot of my studio my office and it's real simple I can zoom in uh, so this will give you an idea of as to the picture quality and you'll see it's running at about 30 frames per second picture quality is not that great zoomed in but you can still make things out so and the beauty is you can zoom anywhere on the picture that you need to you can grab it and pull it around um, 
if I wanted to zoom in my desktop, I could zoom in, pull it around. So again, not the greatest picture quality when zoomed in, but as you can see, it's even picking up the paint marks on the wall and uh, uh, the transition here between the black ceiling and the white where the uh, trim is going to go. Uh, you know, you can see pretty decent detail. I'm going to zoom back out. And this is the same camera with an outdoor view, a nighttime view. And so there is my neighbor's shed. Here's my two sheds, my big one and my little one, uh, our electrical pole. Uh, you can see down the side of the house and into the backyard. And if I need to, I can zoom in again. Uh, not, not the greatest picture, especially with night vision, but I can see people prowling around if they were prowling around in, in my neighbor's backyard and in mine. And that's the goal of this. It's not necessarily to identify the people prowling, but to see the people prowling. And then this is that real link cam uh, in our, in our uh, driveway. So I can, uh, I can do the same thing with it. I can move it around, zoom in, zoom out. And, uh, but I think the picture quality on these Amcrest cameras is far superior to that Rio Link. Uh, now the Rio Link is uh, only operating about 15 frames per second, whereas the, uh, the Amcrest cameras are both, I'm running them full bore at 30 frames per second if they need the bandwidth. And that has has a lot to do with the picture quality as well. So, so let me take off my glasses so you know I'm extra serious about this. Well, there you go. Uh, you saw for yourself how easy it was to mount the camera. Ignore the cable mounting. Uh, we have some clips on order, and we will be mounting those cables to the wall and then painting over them. And uh, just FYI, latex paint is plastic in a can. So uh, if you want to seal, even though, so even though those are not outdoor cables, you can easily paint over them with latex paint and they will be protected uh, because latex paint also has UV shielding in it. So uh, secure your cables and paint over them with your house paint and you'll be very happy. I've been doing it for years. But I digress. So let's come back. Would I, would I buy these? Yes, of course I would. I bought two of them now. In fact, these are going to be my outdoor cameras moving forward from this point on in this price range so for 70 bucks you get that wide field of view you you get an SD card uh, you can record right onto the SD card on the camera uh, infrared night vision the picture quality as you can see is excellent excellent I can zoom in and out electronically and still retain a lot of the detail that I need so I can again watch people steal my stuff and um, there you go I, I cannot recommend these cameras highly enough uh, the other one that's uh, by the driveway, you know how I feel about that. I'm not even going to bother to do a review on it. Uh, neither of these cameras, well, I've only got one of them outside. It's been outside about a week, and we've been having lots of rain here lately. And you know the the one that I have outside, the Rio Link cameras, has had a problem with uh, staying powered on. And uh, what it'll do is it'll power off and it'll reboot and wipe the it'll wipe the configuration I have to go in and set it up again and it'll do that two or three days after it rains so I don't know whether I'm getting water into the camera or getting water into the connection or what it is but I've had zero trouble with this Amcrest camera it's been up and running about a week and we're getting ready to install another one now I did one more slightly crazy thing if you remember my video on building a surveillance system you know we put it on that 2U unit in my rack and I have had a lot of people question and comment how does Blue Iris work in a virtual machine? So I took the plunge and I created a virtual machine out of that uh, surveillance system and put it onto one of my, I put it onto my IBM server uh, and uh, as a virtual machine and it runs great. I got six cameras. Uh, my utilization on my CPU stays around 60 or 70 percent and that's even with other VMs running on that IBM. In fact, I have done a little experiment. I've put three or four active VMs on that uh, IBM and I've also run Boink on it in the background to get the server utilized at about 90 to 100 percent. And uh, so far so good it hasn't missed a beat. I'm going to do this for one week and make sure I don't have any trouble. Uh, and then I'm going to do a video on that as well. So look forward to that coming up. So there you go. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative 
As always, please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments in the comment section. I love user comments. I love to, I love to check that thing every day and see what y'all have to say about the video. And uh, I got to tell you, you have been extremely helpful in my Linux versus Windows videos. My Linux, all my videos that I've posted recently, I've had lots of help and uh, lots of help from the users and subscribers and I, I really appreciate it. Keep them coming. I do like that. We take PayPal and Patreon. If you're so inclined, go check out our Patreon page. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. The links are down in the description. Click on them and they'll take you right to where we are. Thanks again for watching us. Come back and see us again soon. And don't forget, we will see you on the other side.